Hey, what up, YouTube? What up, Fight World? It's your boy D Dynamite here, aka Mr. Boxer.com, aka Mr. Holla at your motherfucking boy. So I'm in the building, man, and I'm here to report to you guys that Adrian Broner versus Sean Porter is official. Like a motherfucking whistle, it's gonna be going down in Vegas. All right, the MGM Grand, June 20th, PBC on NBC, at a catch weight of 144. Womp womp. Um, I, I don't know why this they do these fucking catch weights. I, I don't get it. He should just fight at the 147 and just call it a fucking day. I, I don't understand the catch weight shit. But if Porter's down to do it, if he signs the contract or he signed the contract, I don't want to hear no fucking excuses, okay? I don't want to hear that you were weight drained because you agreed to do it at 144. So we're doing it at 144. So, with all that being said, let's talk about it, man. Um... I think these two dudes match up very well um, as far as their skill set, as far as their attributes. Um, if you watched my last video, you saw that um, I pretty much gave my definition of what I believe to be a good fight. And what I believe to be a good fight is two guys that match up well together as far as their attributes and also the stylistic matchup between the two fighters. Um, that also kind of adds to... Um, how good the fight is, okay? If we're dealing with a matchup like boxer versus puncher or pressure fighter versus counter puncher or those kind of stylistic matchups that kind of create fireworks, you know, um, kind of plays into my idea of a good fight. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go ahead and talk about each attribute and show you how comparable they are, all right? To show you how good of a fight this is. Because I've been hearing a lot that there's a lot of people that believe that Sean Porter is just going to run over Adrian Broner, man. And I just want to show you guys that ain't the case, okay? You might not like Adrian Broner. You might have a problem with how he acts outside of the rings. But you cannot deny that this dude is talented. That this dude carries a lot of skill coming into the ring, all right? And he's going to present some real big problems for Sean Porter, in my opinion. OK, so let's just go ahead and go over these attributes. Now, I, I pretty much break down fighters in about four categories. OK, like I mentioned in my last video, experience, power, speed and technical skill. OK, now, as far as the experience, we'd have to say they're pretty much even. All right. Broner has fought people like DeMarco. He's fought people like Malinaji, Maidana. Uh, people of that sort. Sean Porter has also fought Malinaji. He's fought Devon Alexander. And he's fought people like Julio Diaz. Now, Broner's a three-time world champion. Okay? So, he definitely has more experience fighting for a world title. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean anything because this fight isn't for a world title, of course. But... That definitely does give him the edge as far as being in big fights. All right. Sean Porter has fought a tougher opponent, in my opinion, in Devin Alexander, um, which would kind of give him the edge. All right. But the big fight experience is something that is, you know, highly required in a fight of this magnitude. This is a big fight. All right. So when you have big fight experience, it kind of gives you the edge. But again, very comparable. OK, very similar experience. These two have. All right. Now, moving right along to the speed category. Broner has very fast hands. All right. I don't think there's anyone right now in his weight class that has faster hands than Broner. OK. Probably could say something like Khan, but I don't I don't even really know that. OK, Broner is very fast with his hands. OK, but at the same time, Sean Porter is fast with his feet. OK, so you see how they match up very well together. OK, Sean Porter's feet could create situations where he could put Adrian Broner in problem situations. Adrian Broner's fast hands can definitely put Sean Porter in situations that he would be in some problems. So. <laughs> that matchup is, you know, very comparable as far as those two at those two attributes. OK, moving along to power. A lot of people think Sean Porter has a whole lot of power. I'm here to tell you it's not so. Once again, if he had power like that, he would have knocked out Julio Diaz. OK, he would have knocked out Devin Alexander. He couldn't do it. So obviously his power isn't to the magnitude that most people make it out to be. All right. Yeah, he bulldozed Polly Malinaji, but 
Devin Alexander was still there. Julio Diaz was still there. So Sean Porter is definitely not this powerful guy that a lot of people make him out to be. All right. And as far as Adrian Broner is concerned, Marcos Maidana has gone on record in saying that Broner hits very hard. OK. And it's pretty safe to assume that he hits hard just based on watching Adrian Broner fight. Not because his punches are flashy, but you have to look at the snap he puts on his punches, all right? And the shock of the fighter that, or the, his opponent that's taking the punch, okay? So the power, I would have to say, those, that attribute also very comparable. Now, the technical skill. Actually, I break it down into five categories. I'm sorry. The technical skill, I would have to give to Broner. To me, Broner throws the better jabs, the better right hands. Um, he throws his punches better. Um, his style is more polished and refined. Um, so I would have to give that nod to Broner, okay, in that aspect. But Porter's not far behind in that respect. He is definitely, he definitely does have a more crude style, but he does have um, some solid fundamentals there. But I would have to give the nod to Broner in that aspect. Now, we're also talking about defense as well, which would be the fifth category that I did not mention earlier. But defense, also another thing that would be comparable. Sean Porter moves his head very well, okay? He has very good defense. Broner uses those technical skills that I talked about in the last attribute, okay? He uses that Philly shell, all right? Um, hopefully, he'll be moving around in this fight, which is also a defensive capability, and um, also, I would have to give Broner that nod in that fight. So you see that when it comes to attributes overall, Adrian Broner is either even with Sean Porter or he has the edge when it comes to the attributes, okay, and technical skill and defense. Now, based on that alone, it's you're pretty hard-pressed to say that Broner would get bulldozed by Sean Porter, okay? But, of course, there's more to it. Um, Sean Porter is definitely the bigger guy. Fought at 165, coming all the way down to 147. He's also the more disciplined guy. Um, I'd give him the grit edge over Adrian Broner as far as those intangible things. Uh, but the fact that he's coming all the way down and weight all the way down to 144 um, is definitely a disadvantage for him. OK, and something that he's definitely going to have to overcome in this fight. OK, I don't know if he's going to be weight drained or what, um, but he's going to be in with someone who's going to be sharp. OK, Adrian Broner, <laughs> based on his last fight versus John Molina, he looked very sharp. He looked very good. I don't see him taking a loss easily. OK, he knows what's at stake. Um and he knows what kind of fighter Sean Porter is. I watched a few videos where um, Kenny Porter was talking about their history. So he knows what kind of fight he's going to be getting into. So I see Adrian Broner coming out in this fight and being very sharp in this fight. Um, another thing that you guys got to consider is if you look at his last fight versus um, John Molina Jr., Adrian Broner did a very good job maintaining the distance, okay? Distance is definitely going to be the key in this fight, the range. Um, Sean Porter, of course, is going to be looking to close the distance, but Adrian Broner, of course, is going to be looking to keep Sean Porter at a distance, and he did a very good job with John Molina utilizing that jab, okay? Which is the very same jab that I expect to see in this fight versus Sean Porter, okay? I want to see a little bit more if I was Adrian Broner or if I was his trainer or whatever. Um, and you could definitely tell that um, Adrian Broner was working on his legs, all right, in that last fight because he did a lot better job moving around the ring and um, doing very good technical things, all right, to keep John Molina um, at distance and also keeping him off balance, all right, with that jab and keeping the range with that jab so he was doing very good things in that fight to the point where um i could see adrian broner making this an easy fight all right um a lot of people are going to be like what how the fuck what but yeah i mean if you really look at it um adrian broner not only has the potential to win this fight but make it look easy all right now a lot of people are going to look at the Marcos Maidana fight and 
think to themselves, well, if he had a problem with Marcos Maidana, he's going to have a problem with Sean Porter. Not necessarily. OK. Reason being is because Marcos Maidana, to me, is a lot harder of a hitter. All right. He, he was able to hurt Broner early in the fight. All right. And create some real problems, you know, control the pace based on that. All right. But even when you look later on into that fight, Marcos Maidana got hurt a few times by Broner. All right. And and Broner controlled the, the last two or three rounds of that fight. All right. Because he was able to pick up on the timing and you know, fi kind of figure my Donna out towards the end of the fight. So, you know, if I had to pick now, I would probably pick Adrian Broner to win this fight, man. But this isn't a prediction video. I'm just making observations, uh, giving you guys my uh, views on this fight. I really like this fight. I can't wait for June 20th. Um, let me know what you guys think, man. Hit me up on Twitter, Box Capital X or Capital X Die. All right. And another thing, man, you know, this this is, you know, I'm going to give you guys the secret to gauge whether it's a good fight or not. OK, other than my criteria, this is how you know this is a good fight. OK, when you think to yourself, who's going to win? All right. And there's no definitive answer that pops into your head. You could see either fighter winning. All right. That is what makes a good fight. All right. Canelo Kirkland, you knew what the answer was, okay? You knew who was going to win, whether you wanted to admit it, whether you want to admit it or not, you knew who was going to win that fight. In this particular fight, you don't know. Could be Broner, could be Porter, depends on who's able to control the range, all right? But they both have their disadvantages, they both have their advantages. We just have to see June 20th, all right? But I'm excited for this fight, man. Um, anyway, man, I'm out this bitch. Holla at your motherfucking boy.